I did not grow up in a hunting family for whatever reason. We lived in suburban uh, northern Virginia. But I did always have an innate uh, desire to be an outdoorsman and to be a hunter. It just was part of my DNA. From my perspective, the world is moving at such an incredible pace. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to keep up with technology and all this stuff. Now, I say that as a 62-year-old guy. Maybe it's a little different than young, for young people, but I hope not because the outdoors gives you something that you can't get on a TV screen or a computer monitor. It gives you this sense of peace, I think, and, and it's a real gift to be able to utilize what we have. I find being outside is, is like being in my church. You know, it, uh, it, I call it green meditation. You know, when you're outside, there's just something comforting about being in the outdoors and, and I'm fascinated by the mystery of it all. It's, it's amazing to me how many people don't know where to start, even, even hiking. And the same thing with hunting. I have introduced hunting to not only young people, but older people. And, and it's, it's a very rewarding experience to see the look on their face and when they get in that opportunity to come up here and hunt. Now, I find that these people, once they are introduced to this, they usually expand upon that experience and, and start uh, finding other avenues and places to go hunting. And I only had one ask. If they harvest an animal, I want a picture of them with the animal, and I want them to write me a note about their experience. And I ask that for several reasons, is that to instill in them that there is a responsibility in, in hunting and doing things the right way, and there's also a respect that this is, this is a big deal, right? This is a big deal to be able to have this opportunity. And, uh, you know, I often say that hunting is you know, 1% pulling the trigger. It's 99% all the other stuff. It may be, maybe obligation to pass something on, you know, and make it potentially better than I found it in a very small way for me in terms of hunting, you know, and I sort of live my life that way, that, that it's important to me to leave this earth in a better place than I found it, um, or leave my farm in a better place than, than when we, we, we first bought it. And, uh, you know, that, I think about that. And, you know, we've done that through, uh, you know, WIP programs and different things with the state. You know, we've had foresters go out, we've planted trees along the, the waterways. Uh, we do food pots not just for the hunting season, but we do them year round. So uh, the deer and the turkeys and the bears and the coyotes and the, and the bobcats all have uh, a boost up. Springs to me are almost spiritual. Here on the farm, up in the mountain, we're the birthing ground of water is what I like to say. We have a dozen springs on the farm and our, our watershed uh, here, we, we're in, on Hat Creek, which goes into the Ty River, which goes into the James, which goes into the Bay. And so what we can do on the farm to mitigate animal uh, waste, getting in the water is something that we've taken very seriously. Conservation is the key to supporting this heritage that has been given to us, to be able to pass that on to the next generation. If we don't conserve the great gifts that we've been given, the forests, the streams, the, the fish, the, the wildlife, in a way that's positive, they won't be there for future generations.
I think we've done a tremendous job. We can do a better job. And uh, I think the more people that we get involved in the outdoors, the stronger will be our government's commitment to protecting it.